So today I am going to be taking the the time to talk about Ansu Fati. So everybody think Alan Media. I know I know that he he's been asking for this question for for so long, right? He is in the in the Discord group chat, and if you guys do want to join the Discord group chat, you guys can. So there is going to be a link down below where you guys can just you know ask me anything, and then if I feel like it, I'll probably talk about it in a YouTube video. But Alan Media was talking about how. You know, Ansu Fati has been doing so well as of late through through the season with Brighton. Can you talk about him? What do you think about him? What what do you think about his progression, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So I want to talk about Ansu Fati, and yeah, it's true. Like right now at Brighton, he has four goals and one assist within a span of 606 minutes or 660 minutes, something like that. It's very impressive. And recently against Ajax, he scored one goal and provided one assist during the Europa League. So not only is he providing results in the Premier League, but he's also providing results in a different competition, which is the Europa League, where they could be knocked out at any moment. So it's, again, it's very impressive. And around November 2nd, I think it was around two weeks ago, uh, Bojan, who is one of our executives at the club, he wanted to speak about Ansu Fati because he recently went to go see him. And this is what Bojan had to say. I came back from Brighton very happy. I really like the coach and his coaching staff. I know the assistant coach, Andre Mo- Maladera, from my time at Milan. Ansu Fati is very good and in good hands. His coach believes in him and he's very happy. The Zerbi, who is the coach of Brighton, he recently said said this about two or three days ago, and I quote, I expect always more and more from Ansu Fati. He played very well, but but after the second goal, he had chances to score again. He has to push for more and more. So this is the Zerbi saying, yes, like this player, this player has been doing amazing. He scored a goal, but he could have scored two. He could have scored three. He found himself in positions where he could have scored the goal, but he was not focused enough. And that is a challenge to Ansu. And I think that this is exactly what Ansu Fati does need and something that he has been lacking at Barcelona. Like when every time we saw Ansu Fati have a good performance or maybe score a goal or provide an assist, everybody was like, yeah, he did well. There's nothing else that he can improve on. He he was amazing. He played amazing tonight. But here at, at Brighton under De Zerbi, De Zerbi is like, yes, he scored a goal, but I want more, right? I want, I want way more than that because I know he's capable to do, to do so much better. And I love that. I love that because it's only going to push Ansu. And maybe in the future, we could see, we can see more coming from the player. And that's only going to excite us as Barcelona fans. Now, the interesting thing about this whole thing is that Ansu Fati's position at Barcelona is very much different to the position that he's playing in like today at Brighton, meaning that at Barcelona, he was playing as a left winger. Here at Brighton, he's playing as a striker. And not just like a number nine, but like a number nine that acts like a 10 too because he drops in very like deep areas trying to support the one of the midfielders. And I find that fascinating because De Zerbi's not only asking for more, for more goals from Ansu, but he's also asking for Ansu to evolve his game. And I'm going to be showing you guys like a couple of heat maps so you guys can see how Ansu Fati played at Barcelona as a left winger and where he was positioned at the most. And then we're going to be comparing that to the the heat maps that we see today at the Europa League and in the Premier League. You can see that it's very much different. You can see that he sees the ball much more centrally. And I'm assuming that the reason why De Zerbi wants Ansu as a deep 10 to a, a number 9 is because he knows that he has a lot of technical power, right? And... A lot of our players from the academy, they do carry a lot of technical power, and the coaches do see that. Like, when we send these players on loan, they're like, okay, this this guy is coming from the Barcelona academy. We can see that he's a very good passer. He's much more than a left back. He's much more than a, a midfielder. He's much more than a striker. He's much more than a winger. He's much more than a right back, a center back. He can do so much more. That is what our players are. We're, we're capable to do more than what we're supposed to do. And so in the case of Ansu Fati, De Zerbi is like, okay, I see him as a nine. I see him as a left, as a left winger, but I think that he can play as a 10. I think that, I think that he can go into areas where he can get the ball from deep areas and go on the counter attack. And so, so because he has so much technical power, he is a player that every time he receives the ball in the middle of the pitch, he is the one that is told to carry the ball forward into the, into the final third when, when they go on the counter attack. And that's again, very fascinating, right? He's the one that's leading the charge of the attack. And when Brighton is doing a great buildup and they have a successful buildup from the defense to the attack, 
once they're in the in the opposition's half, one of the midfielders of Brighton try to look for Ansu Fati, and Ansu Fati acts like a number nine this time, and then he runs into space behind the defense, and his runs are very much, very much, like, correctly timed, and I'm like, wow, like, he looks so sharp, he looks so energetic, he looks so hyperactive, and I love that. I love that because the, the energy that he brings on the field is very much different to, to the energy that we saw at Barcelona last season. He looks more more enthusiastic that that's that's a word that i do use a lot in this youtube channel because it's important for the players to feel enthusiastic it's important for them to feel happy to feel uh to feel excited because when when they're happy when they're excited you can just see them play much more they're asking for the ball much more they're not looking down they're not sad they're not thinking about something else they're just enthusiastic about the game that they are playing in and i see that from ansu and you know i'm just i'm really happy because Ansu Fati in the past two years has been really struggling, really struggling. And it came to a point where Ansu Fati had to be benched at some at some point during the games of last season, right? It, it came to a point where Gavi took his place, a midfielder. Gavi was playing on the left wing and Ansu Fati was on the bench. And we're like, okay, so this has to be the end for Ansu, right? Because we thought that Ansu was going to be the, the next Eto, the next Henry. We, we thought that he was going to take on the, the mantle because he was given the number 10. He was given the number 10 last season. And that, that's a huge deal. The number 10 shirt carries a lot of weight. And that is how much Barcelona believed in the player. And for Xavi to take out Ansu, who was wearing the number 10, and to put in Gavi in that position was already telling us so much, right? Two, two things. Point number one was that Ansu Fati was not good enough as a left winger in that Barcelona squad that we saw. And point number two, Gavi was just overperforming him and he brought much more much more pros than cons on the left wing because he was more hyperactive, he was more intense, he helped build up with Lewandowski and Xavi liked that. And so to see this story of Ansu making that decision to go on loan to Brighton and to succeed, right? As of now, based off what we have been seeing after 660 to 600 minutes, he it's it's a it's a great it's a great story to tell now i want to say another thing i want us to be very careful about how we see ansu fati and what type of like how we view the player because there's a thing called the honeymoon effect i don't know if you guys know what the honeymoon effect is it's basically when a player first arrives to a club and they perform very well like really good for like about two or three or four games and then they under deliver for the rest of the the next few matches that is something that's very common in the world of football. Look at Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo. They came in, they did very well the first two or three games, and now they just turned off. Like I don't, like I don't know. Maybe it was just it was the honeymoon effect. And the reason why we call that they call that like a honeymoon effect is funny because it's kind of like how when a couple first gets married, they they live they love each other a lot. They 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 act all romantic in the first two or three months and everything's all well. But then after a while, after like a year or two or three years, they kind of get you know, like they don't, they don't, they don't act the same. You know, I don't know if you guys kind of, I don't know if you guys are like familiar with that, but they they don't act the same. And you know, the, the honeymoon effect is all is all gone, right? You just gotta act like normal normal people. And this is why I bring that type of saying to the world of football, right? The player first comes to to the club, everything's off, cool, fine. The fans love you. You're excited because it's your first it's your first few games, and then after. You score a couple of goals and provide assists. You just turn off after about four or five games. That is what happened to Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo. And I don't know if we're seeing the same thing with Ansu, which is why I hope that Ansu continues this this performance for the next 30 games. I want I want this from him until like May. And I want him to perform in the Premier League. I want him to perform in the Europa League. I want him to be the reason why Brighton go into the semifinals of the Europa League and I want him to also be the reason why Brighton end up in the top five in the Premier League maybe in the top four why not and so in my opinion I would set this goal for Ansu I would say if he scores 10 goals and provides 10 assists and Brighton end up in good positions in all competitions that they play in for then I think it would be considered as a successful season for Ansu now my biggest question that I have is that if Ansu Fati ends up being so successful as a striker and Barcelona call him, right? Xavi says, hey, look, I want you back. You 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 did very well at Brighton. We're satisfied with you. We want you to come back, you know, but you're going to be playing as a left winger. Is that something that Ansu Fati is going to want, right? Because if Ansu Fati does return, does that mean that he's going to be given the role as a striker or as a left winger? That is my biggest question because I, I can see Ansu Fati actually saying no to Barcelona and to Xavi 
if Xavi does say, we're going to just put you back and revert you back to the left wing position. And I, I can see Ansu Fati saying no to that because Ansu has been really finding his form as a number nine, playing much more centrally. And do you think that Ansu Fati would say yes to that callback by Barcelona, knowing that he's going to go back into his, uh, his old position? I don't think so. I think Ansu Fati would want to continue to play as a number nine. And so what could Xavi say in the future? Could Xavi say, you know, we, we want you back. We saw how you performed as a number nine. And, and if you do come back, we'll continue to give you the exact same role that we saw you over there at Brighton. Now, I don't even know if his position at, at Brighton exists at Barcelona, which is, you know, one of the most complex things. But you guys know what I mean. Like if, if Ansu Fati wants to play more centrally, Xavi Hernandez has to say, I, I want you to play as a number nine. And I, I, w- I will continue to play you as a number nine if you do come back. And if Xavi does say like, okay, there's there's no way that you can come back to Barcelona and play as a number nine because I'm going to need you as a left winger because, you know, we're going to be having Vitor Roque. We're going to be having Mark Guyu. I don't see Ansu Fati coming back. I really don't. And, you know, like, do I find that as a problem? Maybe, but I don't see Barcelona losing in this situation. If Ansu Fati says no for whatever reason, fine, right? right? Like, he's on loan. We can sell him for a good amount, right? He just had a good successful season. And we can sell him for around 60 to 70 million euros, which would really help Barcelona maneuver through that summer to bring in brand new players. And if Ansu Fati, you know, if everything goes well, right? If Xavi says you can play as a number nine, Ansu Fati says, yes, I'd love to come back, then Barcelona still win. You get back a, a very healthy, motivated Ansu. So Barcelona don't lose in this situation. And that's that's kind of basically it. That's kind of, that's kind of like how I see this whole thing about Ansu and his and his situation with Brighton. Let's see. Let's just see, guys. Let's see how how he continues to perform under De Zerbi. And I hope that De Zerbi brings justice to this man's career because, man, does he need it after what we have seen in the past two years. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.